This is an RNZ podcast. Bonjour, mes amis. Je m'appelle Ben Strang. I am the host of RNZ's Paris Essentials podcast. And I come to you today with great news again. Hayden Wild has won a silver medal in the men's triathlon at the Paris Games. It was a stunning race to watch late on uh, Wednesday night. Just a, a, a cracking finish. Hayden Wild, not the best swim, started uh, the bike leg with a bit of work to do. Dylan McCulloch with the great assist, the Kiwi. He was in the lead group, dropped back, pulled Hayden Wild up to the front. Then Hayden Wild streaks clear during the run leg. You're thinking, oh my goodness, we're having another gold medal. But then Alex Yee of Great Britain comes out of nowhere to snatch the win right at the death. But what a race, what an event, and what a nice moment at the end with the two of them sharing a moment, just sitting on the on the pavement afterwards and just uh, having to think about what the, what an amazing race it was. So uh, a great performance from Hayden Wild. We will talk to Hayden Wild in the episode. We will also talk to Dylan McCulloch about the assist that he provided. Honestly, what a legend uh, to do that. He finished 19th in the end, but at the end of the day, you know, when he's asked about it in 30 years' time, he helped Hayden Wild get that silver medal. He was crucial. Uh, we'll also talk to the New Zealand Sevens team, who were celebrating their gold medal again at New Zealand House today. And we'll uh, have a chat with Daniel Hillier about the golf tournament, which starts today. But let's start by talking to Hayden Wild. Nathan Rarere was at New Zealand House today. Uh, you know, massive atmosphere at New Zealand House because part of the bike leg of the triathlon went past where New Zealand House is on Champs-Élysées. So it was only about 30 or 40 metre walk to catch a lot of the triathlon. And uh, and so shortly afterwards, Hayden Wild was wheeled to the Marriott on the Champs-Élysées and, and talked to family and friends and the media, and Nathan Rarere was one of them. Hayden, uh, in the end, what was worse, the pose or the current and the scene? Uh, probably current, to be current, honest. I didn't, yeah. I didn't get, I didn't get hit in the face with any uh, any poos, so uh, that's nice. Um, but uh, the current was, wow, it was, it was tough. Yeah, it was tough. What I mean, it looked tough out there today, mate. It was hot. It was hot enough watching it. What was it like being in it? Yeah, it was. It was. A, it was very like Tokyo. Actually, it was obviously right. it rained. Um, the humidity was extremely high, which I wasn't prepared for. Um, you know, ideally we would be racing at 8 a.m., not 10:45 in the middle of the heat. Mm. Uh, probably got close to 30 degrees, but the humidity was extremely high, uh, and I think that's I think that's what got to me at the, end, the last few k. I just really faded hard, and uh, yeah, I gave it everything and kept to the race plan, but uh, just didn't have the have the, the legs in the tank. He he just appeared out of nowhere in that little sprint where he went past you. So I mean, you were doing a fantastic poker face on TV. When could you feel it? Like, oh come on, legs, just get me there. Yeah. Two and a half k to go. Like last lap, I was oh. and I was in a position. Um, I was feeling good, but then I got to a k fifteen hundred to go, and I was like, wow, like I am, I am in some sort of hurt here. And I just, I think the fatigue of the humidity and the heat mm. just got to my legs, um, and just couldn't, just couldn't flush lactate out and uh, keep that poker face on to, you know, make sure that when the British, uh, when I saw the British technicals around. That they wouldn't give him any uh, insight. Yeah. Uh, so you just, you got to keep continue your poker face. And when he uh, when I saw him at the turnaround, I was I was done. I was, you know, running very, from my standard, very slow, um, which made it look like he sprinted past me. But yeah. I just think I was just standing still, to be honest. So uh, I try. I, you know, I when I saw him coming, I was like, wow, I'm gonna get ready for it. And he just went past me like I was standing still. And. You know, that's just part of the racing. We've had this beautiful reception here at New Zealand House. I mean, I hope you've felt a million bucks because, I mean, that's, this was all for you, which was cool. Everyone's sending it your way. But it's been so lovely seeing how proud your mum and dad are. Like your dad, have you seen him cry this much? Is he normally one of those guys? No, he doesn't cry too much. But uh, oh, when, I, when, awesome. I, when I race yeah. well, he's, uh, he's always in tears. So that's really nice. And to have my mum and my stepdad and my two brothers and my partner and her family here, yeah. uh, it's just uh, it was just really nice, you know, obviously doing Tokyo and not having having anyone around, not even my coach around, but to have them everyone around, it was just, uh, it was fantastic. Yeah, and and finally, I know you celebrated with a red wine. How does it hit when you're in super peak form? Oh, absolutely, just went straight to the head. Uh, <laughs> I sat down and did an interview and I stood up and I was like, dare, dare, <laughs> one glass has got me on my uh, on my high heels. So, uh, yeah. 
But uh, it makes uh, makes the interviews flow, to be honest. It does. It's good. Well, look, I mean, I know, know the other day when I spoke to you beforehand, you said well, I was going to get to the run, and hopefully, me and Alex blow blow everyone else's doors off. You got that. You got your race that wanted. You got the race you wanted. I mean, like medal, I'm sure you would have wanted gold. Silver's awesome. Has it been a great day? And, you know, when you look back at it. Yeah, I look back and I I can't be disappointed. I did everything I could. I just got beaten by the better man. Uh, he showed class, um, and I had a race plan and just couldn't couldn't deliver. But um, I, oh. I, I obviously delivered the silver. Yeah. Uh, just didn't deliver the goal that I wanted to and that you dream of. But hey, you do what you do. There you go. That was Hayden Wild talking to Nathan Rarere after securing that silver medal. And as I mentioned earlier, during the bike leg, Hayden Wild was some distance back. He was about 30 seconds behind the lead group. Uh, they were chasing the race and so Dylan McCulloch he uh he dropped back dropped 30 seconds back and then almost single-handedly helped to bring Hayden Wild up to the league group team up for success on the run leg Nathan caught up with Dylan McCulloch at New Zealand House uh yeah so we had a plan going to the race with Hayden and our coaches uh when the gap from the first pack to the chase pack uh if, if, if Hayden wasn't in that front pack uh, that was about a 20 to 30 second gap that I would drop back. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the first few laps, I was wanting to drop back. I really wanted to and help him get back up, but the coaches weren't saying that. And then uh, I think on the third lap, I saw the whiteboard that said drop back, Dylan. And obviously, I started freewheeling. And then, yeah, it took us not even a lap to get back up. Right. I just drilled it on the front. So it's as simple as that. There's just a whiteboard off to the side. Yeah, very simple. Just what if a you miss it? Uh, I was looking every single lap, and, uh, and I wasn't going to miss it. They were sticking it out. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, for you, for yourself, because were you feeling quite – you were obviously feeling quite good. Yeah, yeah. I think the swimming and the bike is my strength. So, yeah, that was that was what I was going to play to today. But there was a bigger thing at, at, at heart, uh, and that was Hayden. And I was willing to do anything I anything I could to, to help get a medal, uh, yeah. preferably gold. But silver is amazing, yeah. Well, that, that's great because, I mean, what's nice is that – it looks a very individual sport at home when we're watching, but obviously there's quite a bit of teamwork in this, eh? Yeah, exactly. Like every other race we do, apart from the relays, the individual races are completely individual, but the Olympics are something else. And yeah, yeah we really wanted to work together as a team today. Like ideally Hayden was going to be in that front pack, but if not, I was going to sacrifice and do whatever I could to, to help Hayden. But I was still really happy to hang on for a top 20 myself. Oh, yeah, mate. It's amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm super stoked to my first game. So hopefully I can build on that. Yeah, I was going to say you're an Olympian now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Officially, that's great. <laughs> hasn't really sunk in, and I haven't actually thought about that. So, yeah, really proud to call myself Olympian today. And that was Dylan McCulloch talking to Nathan Rarere there. And, of course, uh, here in New Zealand, we had uh, lots of family and friends, of course, watching that race. Uh, Ingrid Hipkiss on Morning Report, she caught up with Bruce Wilde and Anita Wilde, Hay- Hayden's grandparents, uh, and they were thrilled with that performance. You must be very, very proud Yes, we certainly are proud, but we're a bit shattered. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to ask if you got much sleep. Okay, so it's a long event. Uh, I'm sure it's a long event to actually take part in it, but it's a long event to watch as well. How did how did that happen? Did you have some people over or you sat on the couch by yourselves? We had a, Aunt Hay- Hayden's auntie here with, with us, and uh, it was a, a, a quite a... A traumatic evening, really. <laughs> <laughs> yes, traumatic in, in, in the best kind of way, I guess, because it did come oh. down to the very end there. Um, what was it like watching that last, uh, well, the last few hundred metres of the race? We were sweating. It was just such a heart, heart-beating moment. It was absolutely amazing. And to see him 17 um, seconds behind Alex Yee, um, 17 seconds behind, and then take over at the end. We were just uh, wrung out. It was just an amazing race. And um, Hayden couldn't have done more. It was fantastic. Well, yes, we've been hearing quite a lot of him speaking this morning. What an impressive young man he is, obviously, as an athlete, but just as an ambassador for the sport and for the country. I mean, just astonishing. Yes, I I think he's uh, going to be a huge ambassador for New Zealand and for the sport uh, and for all young people wanting to take up sport. Mm. Well, you've se- I suppose um, you've seen the hard work that's gone into it. Tell us a little about uh, that. Well, it's been going on for years and years and years. We've been travelling miles and miles and miles and following them all over the country. 
And uh, then, of course, when he's going around the world, and, and I, I one day I, I added up his mileage for one season, and it was five times around the equator. That's his air miles. So he's all over the place. And everywhere he goes, I think he is a inspirational ambassador. Yeah. Uh, have you had a chance to speak to him or to um, what must be his, his dad? You're the parents of his dad? Yes. No, his, his dad's no longer. He was killed when he was, Aiden was about five. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm sorry to hear that. That's okay. No, no, no everybody, everybody relatively knows that. But, but um, no, we haven't had a chance to speak to them over there. They've, they've been messaging um, and whatever, but um, as yet, no direct call. We, we talked before the race when apparently um, w- we were saying it was um, amazing and, and Sarah said, well, it was very hot. It was 35 degrees. I suggested that she had a, a dip in the Seine to cool off. Mm, what, what did she make of that? <laughs> I don't think so. No. I, I think you put her on umbrella down and had a shower. <laughs> yes, but he's very lucky because he uh, Hayden uh, paid to have the family over there. So he had his, his brother, eldest brother Ben and, and um, partner Molly, his second brother Hamish and um, Brittany, plus um, Sarah and James, the stepfather. So they were all there and also his uncle Shane who did also lead him into mountain biking, I think, in his young days. In the, in in the, the early, young day. early days. And that was Bruce Wilde and Anita Wilde, the grandparents of silver medalist Hayden Wilde, talking to Ingrid Hipkiss. Isn't it nice hearing how proud grandparents can be? Oh, they are, they are thrilled with that performance. Uh, hopefully they get to get their hands on that silver medal sometime soon. Now, Nathan Rarere, of course, in New Zealand House all morning. We crossed to him a couple of times on Radio New Zealand this morning for a morning report. Here is him describing the scenes to Corin Dan, uh, what it was like at New Zealand House this morning. OK, so there I was at New Zealand House, and New Zealand House, as you mentioned, on the Champs-Élysées, which is the perfect place for it because the triathlon was happening right out the front door. So you go out the front door of New Zealand House, you head to your left about 30 metres, 40 metres, that was where they were going up and turning around. So if you had seen the TV shot where they were cycling towards the, the Arc de Triomphe and then turning around, that's exactly where it was. So this is all going down there. Even getting into town, uh, what was neat was just the amount of support because I think if you've, you know, you've ever seen the French supporting, you know, the, the Tour de France, they do that thing where they get there. You didn't need to be told that the athletes were on their way because there was just this rumble of the crowd further down as they were all hitting the banners on the side and cheering and the words, you know, ale, 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 ale. It didn't matter who was going past, off they off, off they went. So anyway, when I was uh, making my way in, um, the men's race had started, and when I was making my way in there, it was in the cycling, I got to see that. I got to see the most confident American tourist, Corin, tell her friend, who'd obviously just taken a picture, isn't that cool that we've taken a photo of the Olympics, and this tourist goes, no, no, it's, it's cycling, that's the Tour de France. Um, so she she was very confident that she had watched the Tour de France, but she wasn't. I make it into New Zealand House, of course, we're watching, and as the updates are happening, we're like, look at him go, he's getting closer, he's getting closer, he's getting closer. And then, of course, we got that great commentary curse at the end. And... It didn't quite work out the way that it was going to. But well, what was great was there's Hayden just a couple of hours afterwards and he was available at New Zealand House for me to have a chat to. It was really nice, Corinne, you know, because they, they give the athletes a chance to talk because we saw the ferns earlier on. It was actually, there was a bit of problem with the arrival of the Airbus too because there were so many roads were closed. So they were supposed to arrive, but actually we got to see the end of the triathlon and then the ferns uh, arrived uh, to come into there. But Hayden, when he got up to speak, went out of his way to point out how great it was that Dylan had done that and you know he was also talking about the sw- the swim you know the the performance of the women as well talking about how their road was so much more slippery so uh, the the feeling that you got out of him was was do you know what that's all I had to give today and that, if that got me an Olympic silver that's awesome and I think it's a wonderful attitude and that was Nathan Rada there talking to Corin Dan. Now, Nathan uh, had a big day because the Sevens team also were in attendance shortly after the triathlon had finished. Here he is catching up with Tyler King, uh, who was playing her last Sevens match for New Zealand. Talking to your mum and dad before, and it was quite sweet uh, chatting with dad about his memories of his little girl running around there. What a journey, eh? Yeah, it's been a pretty cool, really 
journey, ride, whatever yeah. you like to call it. Um, it's had its ups and downs, but to finish on this high is uh, it's a fairy tale ending. Yeah, I mean, look, I know you've still got another chapter to write, heading off to league, you know, having go with that. But I mean, just for this through here, like when you get old and you can do the rocking chair and look back. Do you think, I mean, how do you think you're going to take all this in? Like, oh, what a life, eh? God, I know, I don't even know. Like, I've just been blessed to, to be in this team for that long, to be able to travel the world, go to some incredible countries. Like, I don't think I'm going to be over this side of the world if, um, if it wasn't for rugby, you know. So to be able to experience all of this is, is pretty cool. Yeah, like I was noticing you guys are finishing here at the Welcome, doing some haka and that, and I saw that Porsche got hit with it a bit. I mean, does it feel a bit more real now? They're like, oh, these are, this is coming to an end. Yeah, it's a bit of a roller coaster of emotions. One minute you're on this absolute high, excited and then like oh actually the reality sets in that this is the last time I'm going to be with this team and the last time I'm probably going to see them for a little bit um, so yeah it does sink in and then you go back to this incredible high again and oh it's just all over the place and I don't think it's till I have that moment to myself you know back yeah. home that it's gonna really be there and what was it like last night like did you guys have you been to sleep <laughs> yes I got about an hour sleep <laughs> Um, but it was cool just being able to go and spend some quality time with our friends in Fano. Um, everyone's family there, just supporting each other, celebrating the incredible achievement we've just yeah. done. And that was Nathan talking to Tyler King, and he also caught up with one of the newer players, Jasmine Felix Hotham, and she talked about the impact that some of those older heads, older, wiser heads, had had on the New Zealand Sevens team. Oh, it was surreal. I just remember seeing Georgia kick it out and my eyes just lit up. I just ended up, hands up, ran to the closest person that was Reese and just jumped on her. Then we all jumped together. Um, it was definitely mixed emotions yeah. of, I guess, relieved, but also so damn proud. Um, that feeling of fulfillment that we've achieved what we've set out to do. Yeah. Um, and then to be able to go off the field and hug my family, my loved ones. I had a lot of support um, this weekend, so to hug them after the game just means an extra amount. Yeah, well, I mean, look, it's it's been, like, we got we saw this tournament. This has been years in the making for you, eh? Oh, 100%. I mean, I just today I was reflecting back on Tokyo and I was a travelling reserve, and yeah. at that time... I had to spend a week um, in isolation at the hotel that actually overlooked the village. I wasn't allowed to go watch the girls actually play. So So close but so far. Exactly. (laughs) So I was watching them win the gold through a TV screen um, and that definitely fueled a fire that the next time around I wanted to be in that present moment with them and so it was cool to actually have that moment with them. It's been a big rugby month for your family. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it has been, but um, I said to my parents last night that hopefully I think I came out on top of the yeah, sibling yeah, competition because uh, I'm the only one with the gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with this, there's some of the senior players who are just legends, right, that we've seen for the last decade, like Tyler and Portia and them. They they step away now, and now it falls on you. And, you know, you're one of the senior players to lead through. How does it feel about that? Oh, it's happened so fast. I mean... I was 16 years old when I was watching the likes of Portia, Tyler, Gossi um, playing in Rio and to now actually win a gold medal alongside them. I kind of had this feeling that they were going to stay forever until I left, but um, the moment's come for them to step onto new things and I think they've left such a massive legacy for us to continue. They've left the imprint on this team and it's just for us to continue to follow and strengthen. So, yeah, the black jerseys in an amazing place. That was Jasmine Felix Hotham talking to Nathan Rarere. And now if we just throw ahead to what's to come tomorrow, well, the golf starts uh, overnight at Le Golf National uh, just outside Paris. Daniel Hillier and Ryan Fox are amongst the men's field and have an outside chance of doing something special over there. Daniel Hillier caught up with Barry Guy. It was tough at the Open for sure. Um, yeah, definitely put everyone through their paces. And uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't looking likely to make the cut halfway through the tournament. So um, yeah, to be able to scrape through and then uh, work my way to a top 20, that was pretty pretty good. Um, didn't, yeah, 
didn't have my best stuff on the final day, but just managed to grind it out, um, which I was really proud of. Uh, yeah, it could have been a pretty horrible day if uh, if I hadn't stuck at it. But um, yeah, I mean, just the way I fought it out all week, I think uh, shows the character that I that I have. And um, yeah, hopefully, you know, I can bring some of that to this week and uh, put up a good fight. So a couple of weeks in uh, Scotland. Uh, I know you play different course styles all the time, but now coming to to Paris to play here, um, you know, your thoughts on the course and the like. Yeah, well, I mean, we played the French Open here last year, so I've I've seen the course before, and yeah, it's it's strong. Um, definitely forces you to you know be on top of your game. But I mean, it, not really sure how it's going to play this week. It's obviously pretty wet today. Um, it's wet last night, so it might be a little softer. I'm not sure. It's it's a little bit out of the way from where we are at the moment, but uh, yeah, I think for the most part, it's it's going to test everyone's games, and uh, yeah, if you get slightly off, then you'll get punished. So did, we, did you say you went to the opening ceremony? Uh, yeah, yeah, we uh, we did. We sailed down the boats there, and um, yeah, it's pretty awesome mixing it with all the different countries, and yeah, pretty pretty special experience. So, how does, it, does this feel different uh, in the build up to this tournament because it's the Olympics compared to any, another tournament? Oh, you go? yeah, hundred percent. I mean. I mean, for, for starters, you know, we're, we're part of a big team, um, which is, you know, something that us golfers aren't really used to. It's a very individual sport, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, just adds another element of it and makes it that much more special, I think, being a part of that big team. Uh, so, what's your caddy's name? Uh, his name's Henry, Henry Tomlinson. Tomlinson? Yep. Um, tell us about him and him representing New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, he's not Kiwi, he's an Englishman, so I'm not sure how we feel about wearing the Kiwi kit all week, but um, no, I mean, we, we get along like a house on fire, and uh, yeah, he's been he's been a great help with me getting, you know, taking that next step onto the onto the DP World Tour from the Challenge Tour. Um, yeah, I mean, he's uh, he's got a good head on his shoulders and seen seen this golf course plenty of times, so he's going to be a massive help, and uh, yeah, I mean, even though he's an Englishman, I'm sure he'll be uh, doing everything he can to make sure I can try and win one of those medals. Is he just as excited as you to be here, is he? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's uh, he's going to be loving it. It's his first Olympics as well, so um, yeah, pretty special week for both of us. So, is he um, he knows the Kiwi way and the style and the all, all the things that go with a New Zealand team at the Olympics? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, he's uh, yeah, I'd say he's almost got more of a Kiwi sort of characteristic about him than anything else. Anyway, he's very relaxed and uh, yeah, doesn't mind just going with the flow. Uh, which I quite like, especially you know when we're out on the golf course, he he doesn't get phased too much at all, which is which is quite cool. He sort of helps me keep level headed, and um, yeah, but he's uh, yeah he's really excited. I think he gets in uh, late this morning, so yeah, he'll be looking forward to checking it all out. Uh, and you got family here? What's the situation? Yeah, yeah. So my family actually came out for the Scottish Open a couple of weeks ago, and they've been out um, doing a you know a few weeks on the road, and um, yeah, it's the first time they've been out in Europe all together as as a whole and so it's yeah it's really special and pretty excited that I get to share this week with them as well. Is that parents is it or? Yeah parents and my sister um, a few close family friends as well so yeah I mean it was the first time they knew that I was in the Open Championship well in advance so they were able to get time off work and uh, yeah make sure that they made all the arrangements that they need to so yeah that's uh, it's really cool to have them there. And last one just um, just how do you play well, you know, you've never done it before, of course, but how do you think you should play in Olympics? Because there's only first, second and third, really, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely um, different to what we used to. You know, you, usually you, you walk out onto a tournament, you knock off top ten and you're pretty happy with your work. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty pretty cutthroat in that regards that, you know, you've got to finish in the top three to, to earn anything for your country. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the whole part of it as well. You know, if, if you manage to do that, then it's a pretty amazing achievement and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of guys that will probably adjust the game plan slightly to, to you know give themselves a few more chances of creeping up the leaderboard but uh, yeah we'll, we'll see see how the golf course is playing and just take it from there. And that was Daniel Hillier talking to Barry Guy. So the golf it starts uh, from about 7.22 p.m. is when Ryan Fox will be teeing off tonight uh, that's New Zealand time. Daniel Hillier an hour later at 8.22 p.m. Let's go through all of the other events that we can see tonight. There could be a few medals here for New Zealand, the the ones we're traditionally very good at. Sitting down and going backwards, the rowing, 
The women's single skulls semi-final, Emma Twig, is on at 7.30pm. The men's single skulls semi-final with Tom McIntosh is at 7.50pm. So those are semi-finals, but then we've got a bunch of finals that we're involved in. The women's double skulls final, Lucy Spores and Brooke Francis. They are a gold medal hope for New Zealand. That is at 9.18pm. The men's double skulls final, Robbie Manson and Jordan Parry, 9.30pm. They're an outside chance for a medal they finished third in their semi-final so one of the lower qualifiers the women's cockless four uh final is uh, jackie gowler phoebe spores kerry williams and davina waddy they're at 9 50 p.m they are a medal hope and the men's coxless four final logan logan ulrich uh, ollie mclean tom murray and matt mcdonald 10 10 p.m they are another gold medal hope they posted the fastest time in qualifying for the final. So here's hoping that our rowers can do the business tonight. Elsewhere, we also have the judo kicking off. The women's 78kg preliminary round with Moira Costa is at 8pm. The men's hockey team have their fourth group game against Australia at 8.30pm. In the swimming pool, the men's 200m IM heats with Lewis Clairbert at from 9pm. The men's 50 metre freestyle heats with Taiko Torepi Ormsby. And the women's 4 by 200 metre freestyle relay heats are on tonight. Erica Fairweather, Eve Thomas, Caitlin Deans, and Letitia Lee Transom in those. The sailing, the men's dinghy races 1 and 2 for Thomas Saunders. He gets his uh, Olympics underway in Marseille from 10 pm. Then in the early hours of tomorrow morning, the men's 49er medal race, Isaac McCarty and Will McKenzie are in that. They are sitting third, heading into the medal race, which is double points. If they win the medal race, they need Spain to finish in a pretty poorly position, and they could claim the gold medal. That is at 12.43 a.m. Set your alarms for that one. The women's foil races 12 to 16 for Verl Ten Hav is at 103. The women's dinghy races 1 and 2 for Greta Pilkington at 1.35 a.m. Of course, Greta got saturated at the uh, opening ceremony a few days ago. The uh, the old uh, what do you call it? The plastic. What do you what do you call that plastic jacket? I can't a poncho. It's a poncho. I can't had a mind blank, but the poncho didn't work for her during the. Uh, Opening ceremony, that's for sure. The women's 49er FX medal race, uh, Molly Meach and Joe Allais, they're a wee way back, so I'm not sure how their chances will be, but they're at 1.43am. And the men's foil races 11-15 to 15 for Josh Armit at 1.53am. The men's kayak slalom, the men's K1 semi-final with Finn Butcher, that is at 1.30am. If he makes it through to the final, that will be at 3.30am. The Women's Gymnastics All-Round Final, Simone Biles. I knew everyone would want to know what's happening with Simone Biles. From about 4.15 a.m. will be the individual finals. She'll be a very good hope in those, I would imagine. The BMX starts overnight as well. Rico Beerman in the men's and Layla Walker in the women's. That's at 6 a.m. and 6.20 a.m. respectively, those all start. And then the swimming, should our swimmers make semi-finals and finals? We have the men's 50 metre freestyle semi-final for Taiko Torepi Ormsby if he makes it at 6.44am. The 200 metre individual medley semi-final of Lewis Clairbert would be at 734 And should the women make it in the 4x200 metre freestyle final, that will be at 7.48am. So make sure you set your alarms, watch whatever you want to watch. Hopefully it'll be a... Uh, Another medal riddle day for the New Zealanders. Those rowers are uh, looking very good. So hopefully it's a good day out at the rowing. We will be back tomorrow. We're dropping a new episode of Paris Essentials every day. To le jour during the Paris Games. So we will be back tomorrow with another episode. Make sure you follow and listen to Paris Essentials wherever you get your podcasts. Until tomorrow, à demain, au revoir.